Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to a brand new Roblox Studio video. My name is Floppy and in today's tutorial video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a badge only GUI in Roblox Studio. Now this can work in a variety of different ways. How the system is mainly going to work is if a player has a specific badge, then they will be allowed to open the specific GUI which will be, which will be located on their screen. So this would usually be using a, a lot of GUIs. So you would usually have a GUI button on the side of your screen which then if a player clicked it and they had that badge then another GUI will show but if they do not have the badge already and they are clicking on that GUI which is the badge only GUI then another GUI that is going to show up saying that they do not have that specific badge and they cannot access that other exclusive GUI just for people who have this badge. This can be great if you are either wanting to maybe make a um, badge finding game or you're wanting to give the people who have all the badges or have um, a specific badge a little bit of a like a, a kind of exclusive GUI that they can they can uh, interact with either it's a exclusive badge shop exclusive uh, GUI or exclusive message that you have towards them maybe if you really wanted to you could have a GUI that pops up on the screen saying um, congratulations you obtained the the hardest badge in the game something like that it's completely up to you on what you want to do with this the system and how you can customize it you can have it as a shop you can have it, have it as an exclusive message you can do whatever you really want so now obviously for starters we're going to want to make sure our explorer and properties are enabled because whenever developing roblox studio those things are key when you are trying to create anything in your game if you do not have explorer and properties open your game is not going to go very far anyway Explore and properties. If you don't have explore and properties, click on the top bar here, click on view, and then explore, uh, click explore and properties, and they should show up somewhere over your screen. Now you're able to move these however you would like. If you would like to have it that you explore there, just tell, uh, um, hold it onto the top bar, and then you can move it around. But we'll keep it just over here, so I'm gonna move it there like that. Perfect. So now that we've got our explore and properties, we are not gonna be adjusting anything in our actual main game. We're just gonna be adjusting the GUIs. So we wanna head over to start a GUI, click on the plus button and then insert a screen GUI. Now this is going to be our screen GUI which is holding all our GUI and is really the main parent holder or main parent to our GUI. We then want to click on the plus button and insert a frame. Now this first frame is going to be the frame that is going to be holding our button which is going to allow people to go and access that badge only GUI. So we're just going to go and make this transparent so because we don't really need anything on this frame here. Um, we just want to click on the plus button then next to our frame and then we want to insert a text button. This is now going to be our button that the player is going to be clicking uh, to access the exclusive GUI and if they click this button and they do not have the GUI then another GUI will open up here but we'll get that here to that here shortly. Now it depends on what you actually go and name your your frame here. For this tutorial, I'm going to go and rename this to main frame because this is our main frame as I mentioned, and this is just our main frame which is holding our buttons. So now that we've gone and created our main frame which has actually got our text button which the players will be clicking, we want to go and, if you want, you can go and adjust this. Now you can change the background color, you can change the text and also the font. Those are the main things that you can do, but if you do want to be a little bit extra and make it look a little bit even better, you can add a UI corner. Now a UI corner basically makes it so it's beveled, basically meaning the GUI is round and it isn't its normal square or rectangle shape. And it adds a little, makes it look a little bit more smooth. So if we go and put this to 15, here now you're able to see we have got a nice curved GUI now for this tutorial I'm just going to leave it as a white background and I'm going to go and change the text here to uh, badge only GUI just like that and that is our text there and if you want you can make go and make it bold just like that but that will be fine for now it doesn't really matter so now that you've gone and created your main GUI we want to click on the plus button next to our screen GUI and insert a frame now this is going to be the frame which is actually going to be opening when we do have the badge so this is not the notification GUI which is going to say sorry you do not have this badge this is going to be the GUI that is opening when the player actually owns that badge so either if you've got a special message for them or you've got an exclusive shop stuff like that so we can go and adjust this and I'm going to go and rename this uh, frame here to we'll do it badge uh, GUI. I feel, feel that would be fine. So badge GUI just like that. And now this is our GUI here. Now depending on what you want in your badge GUI or the GUI will that, that will actually open up, 
is up to you. If you want to add text, you can add text. If you want to add um, some game passes, you can add game passes. I've done many tutorials previously regarding uh, game pass shops, uh, developer products and all of that. So if, if you do ever want maybe a game pass button here, you can look on my videos and you'll be able to see where I actually show you how to make a game pass button. Same with a developer product. Um, so you're able to adjust that all here and add whatever. I'm just going to leave this blank here for now. And then if you do want to also get quite snazzy as we did here before on our button, you can also click on the plus button next to our badged UI, insert a UI corner. Again, UI corner, I'm going to change this over to 15 because I feel 15 on a big GUI that will like this will look good. Um, yeah, another really cool thing that you can add, there's a lot of UI things here. You can see UI scale, padding, tabled out. None of this is actually really necessary currently, um, only if you really want to get into more... Uh, complex parts of the UI creation um, but they do come in handy when actually developing a Roblox game for example the UI grid or li list layout and this basically uh, lays out all your GUIs quite nicely but um, you can fill around that with that if you want you've got UI gradient which basically allows you to change the colors for example this side here being green and maybe this side being red and then it automatically kind of blends in together um, but we're going to be using the ui stroke now many people may be wondering okay what is this ui stroke now this ui stroke has actually gone and added a nice bit of a black outline here so if we go and increase the oh goodness me the, the thickness not to 34 if i go and increase the thickness here to four you're able to see now that this actually looks a lot more professional and a lot more smoother compared to our original square gui so this is going to be our main badge gui which if the player has the badge and they click on that button, this is the GUI that is going to be opening. Now, another GUI we want to go and insert is now our notification GUI. So I'm going to click on the plus button here next to our screen GUI, and then we're going to go insert another frame. And now for now, we can actually go and disable this badge GUI by going to the properties, clicking on it, and then click on the visibility to or the visible and untick it so that we can no longer see that there. We then want to go and move this GUI to wherever you would like. So this is going to be our notification GUI which is actually going to be saying, hey, uh, you do not have the badge, um, get the badge and come back, for example. So this is going to be the GUI that pops up when the player doesn't have the badge. So we're going to actually go and change the name of this to Noti. We're just going to do Noti because it doesn't need to be long. Noti for notification, um, notica notification frame, just like that. So that Noti frame, so this is the frame that is going to be showed up when a, uh, something is wrong or you don't have the specific badge now for this we can actually go and add a text label because we actually want our badge to say or sorry we want our uh, GUI to say something so we can do it just like that go and expand your text label over the other frame there and then I'm just going to go and make the background transparency one and then obviously adjust your scale size it up etc and really go change the font so font we can really just use that one there that will do the job and then you just go and change the text and this can be um, you don't uh, or what you don't own the badge you could say I guess you I guess it's class as owning the badge you do you have not discovered the badge if you really want to put what but we'll put here you don't own the badge so this is going to be the GUI that pops up if the player does not have the badge. So you can go and adjust this, go move this around, and um, as you, as mentioned before, add those UI corners, UI strokes, etc., to make your GUI look even better. But for now, we'll just leave it just like this. So now, our next part is actually going to be now going and creating and putting in the scripts because we have now gone and created all our GUIs we need. We've got our mainframe, which is holding our button. We also got our badge GUI, which is holding all the GUI that is going to pop up if the player clicks on the button and they do have that badge. And then we've also got our notification GUI here, which will show if the player does not have the badge and is trying to access into that badge only GUI and this will pop up there. So for starters, we're going to head over to our mainframe. Now our mainframe, we want to head over to our text button and then we want to click on the plus button and insert a local script. So now that you've inserted a local script inside of your text button, which is actually going to be opening the GUI, you want to head down to the description of this video, copy and paste the code that is in description, bring it back to Roblox Studio, remove all the previous code, and then paste in the new code. Now I've even gone and added a little bit of notes here for you folks, so if you are not understanding what I'm actually trying to say, hopefully these little messages here on the side will kind of guide you through what you need to change. Um, so for starters, there's a couple things we do need to change in this code. So for starters here on local badge ID, I'll go over the code here shortly, but I'm just going to go over the parts that you actually need to go and change. So local badge ID, you want to go and change this ID here to your badge ID, which we are going to go and create now. So if you do not already have a badge ID, 
What you want to do, we're actually going to close the script here for now because we can leave it like that. But if you do not own a badge ID or you do not have a badge already created, we want to go and click on file and publish your game to Roblox. Make sure it is published to Roblox because you will not be able to find your game on the main Roblox page. But go and make sure your game is actually saved to Roblox. Then we want to head over to the main Roblox page. As you guys can see, we are now on the Creator Hub and this is where all your games will be. So if you just go to the Creator Hub, if you click Create on the top area on the main Roblox page, it will take you over to the Creator Hub. You click on Creations and then you're able to see your creation. So as you guys can see here, I've got Badge Only GUI Tutorial. So if I go click on this and I click on the three dots and I click Create a Badge. So now that you've clicked Create a Badge, we're able to go and now create our badge, which we're going to be actually, which the player is going to have to have to be able to access that GUI. So you want to go and upload an image here. You then want to also insert a name or a name of your badge. So this is going to be called uh, Fish Badge, for example. We're, we're going to call this Fish Badge. You can add a bit of a description if you really want, but also make sure to go and upload an image. And once you've gone and completed all that, click Create a Badge. So now that you've gone and created your badge, you want to head over to here on the left, find engagement, and then you want to click on badges. Now this will show you all your current active badges which you have on your game. And this is our only badge, fish badge. We just want to go click on the three dots here and click copy asset ID. And then we want to take this back to Roblox Studio. We then want to head back over to our local script here that we made earlier. And then we want to go and change this ID here to our badge ID. Now you may be wondering, wow, that is a long ID. Yes, it is. Roblox recently did an update regarding badges, badge IDs, they are no longer in order. It's just a big bunch of numbers randomized now. So I don't really know why they went and changed it. Um, I don't think it actually even affects anything, but um, yeah, that's that, that's badges now. The badges are quite long with the IDs, but go and paste in your badge ID there. So here on line three, we are now identifying our GUI. So our local GUI, and this is going to be the GUI that is actually holding our main frame or hold sorry holding our frame that is going to open if the player clicks on the button so our one that is going to be opening when the player clicks on the button is that badge frame or sorry badge GUI so we want to go and change frame here on line 3 to badge GUI just like that and basically what this does here it goes to the script it goes from the local script the script that is coming from to the parent to the parent then to the parent and then it goes down to the badge GUI just like that. And as you guys can see, I've also added a bit of a note here for you folks, so that you can go change frame to whatever your frame is, which is, going, which is inside the GUI, which is going to be opening if the player actually goes and clicks on that button, and they do have that badge. Now, also here on line four, where it says local noti frame, basically what we're doing here, this is our notification frame, which we are also having. So it goes to the script, from the script to the parent, which is the text button to the other parent, which is the main frame, and then to the screen GUI, which is the next parent, and then back down to notification frame. And that basically identifies our GUI. So our GUI, which is gonna be opening if the player has the badge, and then also our notification frame, if the GUI that will open if the player does not have the badge. Now here, the, down here on line six, this is where it all begins. So script.parent.mouse button one click, it then creates a function, so script, Dot the parent if that is clicked it then creates a function we then go and identify our player so our local player is game dot local player has badge or oh sorry local has badge equals badge service user has badge player dot user id dot the badge id or comma the badge id so it basically checking if they have that badge and if they do so here on line 10 it goes if has badge then gui dot visible equals true now basically what this is doing is if it has the badge so if has badge then it goes to our GUI and then it sets the visibility of our GUI to true. Basically meaning, yes, they do have the badge, so then the GUI is visible. Else, so if they do not have the badge, then the notification frame is going to go visible. Basically meaning, yes, the notification frame is visible because they do not have the badge. Then it waits three seconds. You are able to adjust the three seconds here to however long you want that notification to be showing on the screen saying that they don't have the badge. And then it goes to the noti frame and the visibility and then it sets default basically saying okay now that uh, frame is no longer visible so hopefully that gives you a little bit more of an idea on how this actually works here um, the main things that you want to change is the badge id whatever your guis are actually called and also the wait time down here once you've gone and adjusted everything click on the x button here next to your local script
So the next script that we want to go and insert is inside our frame, which is actually going to be our close button. So that is actually something I forgot to make when we were actually making our badge GUI. So I'm going to go and uh, disable the notification badge, uh, notification frame here for now and then uh, enable the badge GUI. So we now want to go and insert a frame or sorry, not a frame. We will now want to go and insert either a image button or a text button. For this tutorial, I'm going to be, just be using a text button because, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It, it, it will do the job. So I'll just go and make that. And this will be our X button, which the player can click to exit the GUI. So we can go and actually change the background color of this to red. Again, you can really go and customize this. You can also use a image button. If you do have a custom X image for for it, you can. It, it's going to use. It's going to be. It's going to work the exact same. Nothing's going to change if it's a text button or an image button. It's up to you. But this is going to be our X button. We can go and change the text to X here, just like that. Give you a little bit more of a demonstration. And there's our X button. Simple, done, and easy. You then want to click on the plus button next to our text button and insert a local script. So now that you've inserted the local script inside of our text button, which is going to be actually closing the, the GUI that opens when the player has the badge, you want to go down to the description of this video, go to script 2, remove all the previous code from Roblox Studio, and then paste in the new code. So now that you've inserted the code inside of your text button local script, which is actually going to be closing our, or sorry, closing our GUI, which we open if we have the badge, what will happen here now, it goes to the script.theParent and then if the mouse button is clicked, it then creates a function and then it goes script.parent.parent.visible. So script.parent.parent.visible and then it changes the visibility of this to false, basically meaning then the GUI goes invisible and then it disappears. So this is a fairly basic code. As long as if you've got all the GUI set up how I have and all the buttons set up like I have, then you'll have no problems. But if you do come across any problems, please don't hesitate to join into my Discord server, create a ticket, and then we can happily help you out. So before we can go and test this out, we actually need a way for the player to receive the badge. So it's up to you on how you actually want the player to receive the badge for this tutorial. I'm just going to go and make the player receive a badge if they go and click or sorry, walk over a specific part. So this can kind of be uh, if a, uh, the player will receive a badge if they go and touch that part. So this is going to be our part here, but you can have a variety of different ways on how you want a player to get the badge. You can have them um, maybe meet to develop a badge or maybe meet a, or, or uh, find a specific image, you know, something like that. It really depends on how you want your player to receive the badge. There's many different tutorials on my YouTube channel. So if you are wanting to know how to do that, go and find a tutorial on my YouTube channel. There's many there for you, which can hopefully help you out. But let's go and click on here, click on the plus button, insert a script. I'm just going to do this very fairly basic. And then we just want to go and change this to our badge ID. So we go over to our main frame like that. Grab that one there. I'm just doing this fairly quickly because it depends if you want to use the exact same one. Uh, this will not be included in the description. This is actually from my how to make a player receive a badge when a part is touched tutorial. So if you do want to go and watch that video, you can. And there's many other tutorials on my YouTube channel. But uh, there we go. So the player will receive the badge when they go and touch that part and a humanoid is detected. It's our badge ID. Excellent. So now that is how we are going to actually allow the player to get the badge. So now to go and test everything, we want to make sure all our GUI is uh, um, invisible, basically meaning that we cannot see it. Only the badge and the notification GUI. We want to make sure that we don't go and remove our frame GUI or we will simply have no button. So you want to make sure that your fr main frame UI is actually visible and enabled. So if we go click on here, either on play or team test, we can now go and test out our Roblox game and our new Roblox system. So as you guys can see, we are now in the base plate. And if I go click on the badge only GUI, you guys will be able to see that the you don't own the badge GUI will show up. And after three seconds, it will disappear. If we go do that one last time, badge only GUI, you don't own the badge. So we cannot access our special GUI. Now, if we go and walk over this part here, this will, will reward us the badge. So if we go walk over this, you're able to see we have just been awarded the badge. Now, if we go and try click on the badge only GUI again, you're able to see now the special GUI has opened and we no longer get that notification GUI saying, oh, uh, you don't own the badge. Now we're actually able to access this uh, exclusive GUI because we have that specific badge. Now, let's say we want to go and close the GUI. We're just simply going over here and click on X. And now the GUI is closed and we can do this as many times as you would like. Badge only GUI, close, just like that. And it's really that simple. If you guys are a little bit lost, you don't really know what you're doing. Feel free to create a ticket to my Discord server and we will happily help you out. 
But anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you did enjoy, I'd appreciate it if you do consider subscribing to the channel, turning on the notification bell, and also do consider liking the video. I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see everyone in the next Roblox Studio video.